Welcome to our 3D Slicer workflow on the Volume Rendering module. So here we have our main slicer window. At the bottom you can see I've loaded in our volume and you can toggle through these slices by moving the bar at the top to see your, all the slices from different perspectives of your volume. Above it in our 3D space I've loaded in the 3D model of this primate. The first thing that we want to do is actually toggle off the visibility of this model. So you don't want to have your model and your volume rendering on at the same time, or they'll be stacked on top of each other and it'll be difficult to see whatever detail you're trying to see. So over here on the left hand side, where this eye is, I'm just going to click this, which turns off that visibility. Next I'm going to go to my volume renderings module, so I can go to the drop down menu and select volume rendering. Or you can customize your shortcuts here at the top of your slicer window to quickly, just with one click, go from module to module. And if you're interested in how to do that, please check out another tutorial video in our 3D Slicer playlist. So now that we're in our volume rendering module, I'm going to go over here to where it says volume and click the eye so that we can see our volume rendering in the 3D space. Now I need to move this shift bar so that I'm only showing in the 3D space the image that I, of the material that I want to study for my project. So I've moved that bar until all the material around that skull is not visible and the skull is clearly visible. And you can see from this view why volume rendering can be so helpful when you just want to, before you make your 3D model, visualize what it's going to look like or when you're landmarking your skull and you want to see really fine detail of cranial sutures, foramina, porosity, maybe shape change in the teeth or the orbit, anything where you need to see fine detail, the volume rendering module is going to be very helpful. So let's quickly compare the kind of detail you see in volume rendering to your model. So the first thing I'm going to do is go up and change what our window looks like. So I'm going to click on this button, which lets you change that window, and I'm going to go to 3D only. So from this perspective, you can see how the fine details of small cranial sutures and even porosity or foramina are really clear from this way of visualizing the skull. So I'm going to focus on the superior portion of the cranium, and what I'm going to do is toggle off the volume rendering and toggle on our 3D model again so that we can keep an eye on these cranial sutures and just kind of compare the quality of each way of visualizing. So I'm going to go over here, click on the eye to toggle off my volume rendering. I'm going to go up to my shortcut and click Models, and turn on the visibility of my model. And you can see, while well, you can still see where the sutures are, the detail that you get in volume rendering, if I toggle this off, go back to volume rendering, turn that on, is just much clearer. So it can be really helpful when you're placing landmarks if you need to see the exact place that sutures are coming together or the exact um, foramina opening that might not be visible in your 3D model. Now the last thing I want to show you is how to change your ROI display, so your region of interest. So over here on the left you can see your region of interest, the visibility has been toggled off. So I'm going to turn that on and zoom back so that we can see this bounding box. Now for this, I'm going to change our view on our window again so that we're seeing all the slices of different perspectives. So I'm going to go back to conventional. And now from here, you can move by clicking on these dots on the different sides of your cube here. You can change your bounding box so that, say, if this wasn't just a skull and a few vertebrae, if it was the entire animal, maybe all you want to visualize is the skull. So you can move either in 3D space here by clicking on these dots and sliding them up or down. You can change what of your volume rendering that you are making visible. So you can change that in 3D space, or you can go down here in your slices and move that same dot down like this. So you could cut out the post crania, you could cut out and kind of segment down in volume rendering just to visualize whatever it is that's most useful to your project. So one way that's really um, helpful in landmarking endocranial places is to use this volume rendering to segment out 
or not segment out, but visualize only from this slice downwards. So I'm going to move back to 3D view so that we can see this a little clearer. And now you can see we can visualize inside the endocranium just by moving that ROI in our volume rendering. So I'm going to turn off the bounding box so we can see a little clearer. And if you're looking at fine features that maybe are thin bone that aren't being captured here, from this perspective you can go and sh move that shift bar to fine tune your visualization on thinner bones or certain features within the endocranium. And the last thing I'm going to show you is that you can use this setting of visualizing your volume rendering, but there's also under display and presets a few presets here that, depending on what you're studying, if it's bone, if it's vasculature, if it's soft tissue, you can change these presets to best visualize in volume rendering, whatever you're studying. So these first two presets are most helpful with bone. So just to show you what that looks like, I'm going to choose one of those. And you just have to shift that bar until you've reached the setting that's most helpful for whatever you're going to look at here. And that will conclude our tutorial on the volume rendering module. I want to thank the Slicer Morph team for making this software free for everyone to use. And if you'd like to see more content like this, please subscribe below for more workflow tutorials from our lab. Thank you.